And welcome to Salina Community Access TV, another edition of Your Town in Action. Todd Pittenger, I'm the news director for News Radio 1150 KSAL, hosting the show again today. And with us today, a very special guest. She is, let me make sure I got this right, from the city of Salina, the Animal Services Director. Is that right? Animal Services Manager. And, oh, I messed it up. <laughs> Animal Services Manager from the Salina Animal Shelter. That's it. Vanessa Cowie, thank you so much for joining us today on Your City in Action. Thanks for having me. I'm blessed. You, I love these opportunities. It, it is such a fun time, a, a fun show we have. L let's find out a little about you first. Um, you, How long have you been at the Salina Animal Shelter? And I know you've got an interesting story on how you became the Animal Services Manager. <laughs> I did. I began as a volunteer mm -hmm. uh, at newly immigrated to the United States with nothing else to do. Um, you do you talk a little funny. Where did you immigrate <laughs> from? <laughs> I am way south of the border. I am from, <laughs> I'm from Australia. Uh, so from Melbourne, Australia is where I'm from. And I immigrated in uh, 2011. So I've been here since then, April 2011. And uh, I didn't really have anything to do, didn't really, wasn't familiar with the community, wanted to get involved, wanted to feel invested. I uh, started volunteering at the local animal shelter mm -hmm. and got bit by the bug. Right, uh, so time. to speak. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, not figuratively, though, right? <laughs> Probably got bit by a couple bugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and volunteering, just be, it showed me my passion for animal welfare mm -hmm. and that maybe I thought this was something I could be good at. Uh, so then um, I was hired on as an animal control officer. So I was uh, driving the trucks, and the, the joke was, why would you let an Australian drive on our side of the road? That's right. You drive on the left side over there, right? <laughs> yes. No wreck. No wrecks in the company vehicle, right? <laughs> no wrecks in the company vehicle. So we've got a pretty good history. Uh, and I, I loved it. I really did. I loved doing something different every day. I loved how challenging it was. Mm -hmm. I'm a person that gets bored really easy right. um, and needs to look for something new to do. And, and that job really satisfied that. It's a difficult job. Uh, but it's very rewarding, mm. and sometimes you got to go through those bad days, have those good days, right. and that suits me well. Uh, I did take a year off to travel um, after being an animal control officer for about 12 months, and then uh, you need to decompress a little bit, right? Well, I'd <laughs> only seen Salina, Kansas. Right. I'd this is a big country. It's a big country, and I'd immigrated all the way over here, and I found myself kind of landlocked right in the middle of the country, uh -huh. and it was like, surely there's more to this country than what I've seen. There's just a little bit more. I love the Midwest. Right. But how did I know until I went right, somewhere else? Right, right. Uh, you know, you, mm -hmm. to the coast, to the mountains, there's lots mm -hmm. to see in this country. So I, I uh, got a job test driving Volkswagens. Well, there you go. You got to see drove the country around. driving across I it, did, right? I drove 75,000 miles yeah. in 10 months yeah. and thought, I'd seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I still love the Midwest. And uh, right as I was kind of wanting to settle down, uh, the position uh, opened up. Right. And I went ahead and I applied for it. You had an interest. You had the experience. You're the right person for the job. I so loved it. Almost every day I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've made some good things happen since you've taken over at the animal shelter. I, it's no secret I'm one of your biggest supporters. I'm an animal <laughs> lover. My wife, my family is a family of animal lovers in the amount of full disclosure here. Right. One of the things you did, you turned it into a no-kill shelter. Right. Tell us about that. That was our biggest challenge. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, actually transition a municipal government-run animal shelter to be no-kill. Right. Uh, there's a couple of challenges that we face that are unique to municipal municipal shelters. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about um, humane societies, uh, they're often restricted admission. Right, and tell me so, the difference, what is a humane society and what is an animal shelter? Before I got to know you, I never knew there was a difference. All right, there is a big difference. A humane society is typically run by a private 501c3, a nonprofit. Right. Uh, they may contract with local governments for boarding of stray and unwanted animals. They may contract with other counties. Um, but typically, they are run by, by they're privatized. Right. Uh, so they don't have to provide services that a municipal shelter has to provide. Okay. Um, so in Salina, for example, we are municipal. We're operated by the city. We're funded by Salina's taxes. So I can't just say all of a sudden, today I'm not going to take your animal. Right. Your taxes have paid right. for this service. I have to provide it to you. Uh, so we are ocean, which means when we get full, we still have to take in animals. Uh, we do have tricky conversations with people. Right. Uh, we're careful about our intakes, and we like to, to manage our intakes well, but at the end of the day, we can't turn anyone away. Right. Uh, so that's a struggle we face, and so being no-kill um, and being open admission right. is kind of not heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have looked into various programs um, to help us meet these benchmarks. And uh, 
Right now, we're able to save 97% of the animals that come through our facility. The benchmark, benchmark for no-kill is 90%, right. and we're at 97. So maybe one day you'll be at 100. I know. Yeah, I you mean, know that's the goal. If we didn't get animals that are hit by a car. Right, right, right. Know, or animals that have, have gotten in trouble with the law, so to speak, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you, have, you take those animals and hold them in until the, the court process goes through, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've even managed to help some of these animals that are behaviorally unsound. Right. Um, we've we've figured out that we usually can help fearful animals, mm -hmm. but we can't help aggressive animals. Right. Uh, so learning the difference between the two has been a big help. Um, some animals are involved in bites because they're fearful. Uh, there's a lot more to be done for those animals than animals that are openly aggressive. Right. And so we do struggle with the behavioral ones. Again, this is your city in action here on Community Access TV. I'm your host Todd Pittenger, along with Vanessa Cowie from the Salina Animal Shelter. Dogs, cats, I know you have lots of dogs, lots of cats. Do you take other animals other than that, too? We do. Actually, we have 500 wildlife intakes a year. Wow. Yeah, and then we have uh, domesticated animals other than dogs and cats. Uh -huh. uh, rats, domesticated birds, chickens, fowl, um, ducks, we get uh, horses. Really? Yeah, we get a whole range birds? of things. We get a lot of birds. Uh, we get wild species of birds. We also get domesticated Snakes, species of birds. Snakes, lizards? We get snakes. Yeah. I have a snake in my office right now. Wow. Claude, <laughs> if <you're> Claude. <laughs> stay off my keyboard. <laughs> so uh, we really do see to a lot of different species. Right. Uh, that is another difference of a municipal shelter compared to a private shelter. A uh, private shelter will only serve certain species. Uh, we kind of get whatever the county right. and the city needs us to help with. Um, we're right there. So. so sometimes when those animal control officers come back, you never know what they're going to have in their truck, huh? And you know what? Those are the ones we enjoy the most. <laughs> Honestly, the wildlife is really fun. Um, you know, it's it's nice to go and meet animal control officers from other cities that maybe don't provide wildlife right. services. And, and they're like, what do you do? It's like, oh, we get orphaned wildlife and little baby skunks. And, you know, we're all animal lovers, so we do get a kick out of those situations. It's well, being a no-kill shelter, I would guess that you're a big proponent of spay and neuter, correct? Spay and neuter is uh, not only a great way to affect the community and, and promote animal welfare in our community, but it's actually Kansas statute that every animal shelter animal must be spayed or neutered. Really? So it's not that we love spay and neuter right. and we're choosing to do it. It is forced on our facility to do that. We also do do public outreach where we try and encourage it in the community. But uh, yeah, statute requires that everything that leaves an animal shelter is spayed or neutered. And uh, so uh, that for the longest time was driving these animals to a veterinary clinic right. here in town, just like anyone else would, right. making an appointment. So, so e either you or one of your volunteers or mm -hmm. somebody would have to transport the animal to, to a and vet around. and then back to the animal shelter. Yeah. But, but now you've got a partnership with K-State, is that right? Yeah, with K-State, and this is one of my favorite programs. Um, and I love K-State. They have, they have one of the best veterinary programs in the country, they right? They really do. Um, it, it's, it is premier to a lot of other colleges, and it was exciting to have that conversation. Uh, so for the longest time, shelter medicine was a term that you didn't hear. Right. Shelter medicine is the treatment and care of, uh, the veterinary treatment and care of animals who are sheltered. Mm -hmm. Well, 10, 15 years ago, you didn't treat them. No. That was that idea was so far fetched. I hate to say, you put them down. You right? put them down. Yeah. yeah, if something came in with a broken leg or something had hotworm disease or any of that, you just didn't treat it. Right. And for the longest time, because of this Kansas statute requiring the spaying and neutering of sheltered pets, if they came in not spayed or neutered, those were actually more at risk of euthanasia because the facility couldn't afford to get it done. So shelter medicine has branched out. There's a whole group of veterinary students that I meet that that's all they want to be when they graduate vet school. They want to be a shelter vet. Wow. They don't want to be a private practice vet. Um, you know, there's a, there's a group of people who don't want to manage a, a facility right. and, and employ staff and deal with that human resources side of it. They want to be a surgeon and they want to diagnose and they want to treat. Right. But maybe they don't want to deal with the overheads and the complications of running a business. Uh, so I think um, there are a lot of veterinarians that maybe are not drawn to that business management side of things and would rather contract with a city or a private nonprofit. Uh, so it's an interesting time for vet students, and uh, so they need they need education. We have animals right. to learn on, and they uh, they come every week. And, and that's what I was going to say. Tell me how this partnership works physically. What what do they do? They send some of their vets in training, so to speak. They, they send them to your place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So this is right before they graduate mm -hmm. college. This is pretty much the last thing they do. 
is they travel around in this massive trailer. It's equipped with uh, three surgical tables and it's got all the anesthesia they need, all their surgical kits, everything they need on there, lighting and gases, and it's got a vet tech, it's got a licensed veterinarian, and it's got three students. And they travel around with this big truck <laughs> and this trailer. Big truck and trailer. And they show up and uh, plug it in and get to work. And so uh, they've done over three and a half thousand surgeries. Wow. Yeah, not just for us. They serve 12 different organizations. Mm -hmm. They show up in the morning, they get to work. And at the end of the day, they kick out, and then the next day they go somewhere else. So it's really a win-win, a win for you because you don't have to go to all these other vets all over town, mm -hmm. and a win for the students because they're getting some, uh, some real-life, uh, hands-on education. Yeah. It's practical, uh, a practical experience that they can really use that actually increases their value as an employee when they graduate. So I'm passionate not only about helping these animal shelters because they're helping 12 different facilities just as much us right. uh, but also about what they're learning physically that practical experience but then that exposure to animal welfare in their communities you know realizing the struggles behind the doors going and doing tours listening to me you know right. manipulate their mind <laughs> about shelter medicine and how important it is you know to promote spay and neuter in your communities because this is you know we are facing a crisis of unwanted domesticated animals Absolutely. in this nation and it is at the very bottom level that they can help how many people respect their veterinarian's opinion above anyone else in their family? Well, my vet said this. So if you're right. saying the right thing, you can affect change. Absolutely. You'll be a very respected professional in your community. Vanessa Cowie, the animal services manager. manager from the Salina Animal Shelter. Last thing I want to talk about before I let you go, mm -hmm. you have a very small staff, right? Yes. You couldn't do what you do without a lot of volunteer help. Is that mm -hmm. a fair statement? That is a fair tell statement. Tell me about your volunteers and tell me how I could become a volunteer. Uh, volunteering is crucial yeah. for what we do. Uh, there's a lot of, we kind of group our tasks into necessary tasks, um, whether staff are paid to do it. You know, if, if the animals don't get fed, then things are not right. going to work. Uh, but the volunteers do all this like extra that just improve this, the quality of life right. for these animals. You know, Take them for walks? Oh, yeah. Take I mean, them out and let them play in the dog park? Exercise okay. them, um, you know, even just petting them, and then that helps us with the fearful animals. Getting to know them so then we can find them another home. Hey, so-and-so likes little dogs. So-and-so doesn't like boy dogs. You know, um, we're teaching them to walk on a leash. We're teaching them commands. We're throwing a ball for them. That helps us find homes for these animals. And so we only have about 40 volunteers uh -huh. right now. Uh, we did have over a hundred and actually we narrowed it down uh, because we wanted to rather than have so many We wanted to have fewer more active volunteers right. and we wanted to really engage with them And so we've changed our volunteer program. It's a little bit tougher to become a volunteer now mm -hmm. You do need to have references uh -huh. you need to put in a certain amount of time uh, And you need to be really committed to that facility and so we've um, we've strengthened the group well, your organization, I would say, is one of those that when a holiday comes around, mm -hmm. when you leave for the day, you can't just lock the door and leave and walk away and leave it quiet. 24-7, 365, mm -hmm. your facility has to have somebody, at least if not on call, but somebody there daily, mm -hmm. at least for several hours, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, there's someone there for 10 hours a day, even on holidays, and then overnight we're, we're on call. Uh, so we have an officer on call, and then we have me as a backup on call. And uh, often holidays are the busiest for right, us. Right, absolutely. Yeah, people are distracted with their families. In and, the news uh, world, the holidays are the busiest for me sometimes mm -hmm. too. I'm, I'm sure that's <laughs> the case. And, and uh, so when you see those days when a lot of places are snowed in, right? the law enforcement are not snowed in. That's right. And neither is the animal shelter. <laughs> and you still got to get people down there to feed the dogs mm -hmm. and, and the cats and all of the animals and, and take care of them, right? Yeah, and that's, that's the most rewarding part of the job actually is, is being that needed and uh, I'm being really needed by the community. So if somebody wants to be a volunteer, wants to go through the process, do an application, get the everything they need to do, how Coming do they do Coming to the front it? desk, yeah. yeah. It starts with an application and then it goes from there. Uh, it can take a couple weeks to get you fully oriented uh, and, and we do that for a reason. Um, we were orientating a lot of people and then they, you know. You never see them again. Yeah, you never see them again. And so that administrative side of actually getting them signed up was we weren't getting a return on our investment. And so we have really changed it. Uh, but if it's something that you're really dedicated to do, um, definitely check us out. Uh, but it's not going to be where you show up once every six months. And I promise <laughs> anybody that wants to become a volunteer, you will keep them enthused. Won't you? <laughs> I every think you have day. that in you to keep them excited <laughs> and enthused, right? It is, because we're always looking for new programs. Um, we're starting up Trap New to Returns. Uh, those require a lot of volunteers. And that's fun. That is really fun, where you can impact a little community overnight. 
um, and you can make a big difference. And so it's all about saving lives and it's all about coming up with these out of the box ideas, right. you know, and just trying it out. Uh, we do do a lot of experimenting with different programs mm -hmm. and see what, what's the most effective. Vanessa Cowie, Animal Services Manager, mm -hmm. Salina Animal Shelter, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. This has been Your City in Action here on Community Access TV.